Oh, I don't want to be here right now. I just want to leave. Get out of here. I hate my fans. I want to get pranked oh, right now, man. Shit. That's no, no, no. I hate my fans. Hey, camera. Get the, no, no, camera. No, no. Get the camera. Get out. I would much rather you call me out if I'm doing something wrong, if I'm doing something messed up. I do not want you to blindly worship me. Wow, uh, that was fast. You know, when I originally made that video asking you guys to call me out when I make mistakes, I didn't think it'd be that fast. But here we go. So what exactly happened to Evan Edinger? You might have missed all the drama that happened this past weekend and the too long didn't watch the situation because I know this video is gonna be quite long. I know it is. Is Evan takes a week off from work to go on a tour meeting his fans all across the UK and Ireland because he hates his fans and doesn't actually want to meet them. Now you might see this is a bit illogical. And if you are thinking that at the moment, congratulations, you are smarter than 99% of the people this video is about. Let's dive in. Now I could have made this video into a three part docuseries, but I know you don't got time for that, okay? I'll make it all into one, into three parts in one video. First part, the background. Part two, the context of the thread. And part three, the leaving message. After one of my seven meetups across the UK and Ireland, specifically Glasgow, Scotland, some people left the meetup with a less than favorable experience of me and decided to make giant call-out threads detailing their experience and how bad of a person I am. These experiences include calling me homophobic, transphobic, making fun of someone with disabilities, classist, and against all people from Scotland. In fact, it's quite a cavalcade. I'm surprised that anyone's still watching this video because that sounds like a terrible guy. How can I fit all of those phobias in once? Well, We'll see. So part one, the background. If you didn't know this, I have anxiety. I get anxiety every once in a while. I don't have it all the time. It comes up and it sucks, okay? That's just how it is. And also FYI, I'm not using this as a crutch. I'm not using it as an excuse. I'm not being like, oh, well I have anxiety, so everything's fine. Absolutely not. Just trying to hopefully get some empathy from someone before I even go into logically dismantling every single part of the thread, but I go on. At the beginning of the tour, I felt incredibly extra and inside of my head. If you've watched a video I made about a year ago, I talked about how I have this thing where even if I'm with close friends, I always feel like I'm the odd one out. I'm the extra, no one wants to hang out with me. I'm just, you know, additional, okay? And I felt that incredibly strongly when I got to my first gathering in Sheffield. Why? It was Luke's meetup. I had worked on it initially, but I was supposed to not be there. And then I came and I didn't know if anyone really wanted to talk to me. And if you talk to anyone from Sheffield, they'll probably agree that initially I literally stood there with my arms crossed looking uncomfortable because I was. I didn't really know if anyone really wanted to talk to me. Maybe everyone was for Luke. Who knows? Turns out, no, people from Sheffield really lovely. It was a really nice gathering. However, I still had that slight thought in my head. The true problems really started in Newcastle. You see, Luke had planned this trip, which included two meetups in two different cities almost every day. That's stressful enough as it is to meet loads of different people for two hours in one day, but to do it twice and to have no free time in the middle, and oftentimes I didn't have time to eat or drink, especially before Glasgow. I was really, really hungry for that entire time, and that's obviously going to affect my mood. Am I throwing Luke under the bus? Absolutely not. He's a lovely human, and his main goal with this tour was to meet as many people as possible, and I mean, he succeeded. Good job. 10 out of 10 for Luke. Now I want to make this part crystal clear. 99% of my fans are absolutely lovely. I love having chats with them. That's why I do these meetups, because I like meeting people. However, and this might come as a surprise to you, but I have a very hard time faking happiness. I have a hard time faking my emotions. I have a very expressive face. If I do not like someone or something, I find it very hard not to show that, okay? Otherwise, I feel I'm being really fake and I'm being a version of myself I really don't like. Because you know what? I'm normally a pretty happy-go-lucky guy. But some people can rub me the wrong way so hard they push me to my limit. I don't care if they're a fan or if they're a random stranger, I do not want to be around those people. Now, when you're in a situation where you're forced to be around those people and people have high expectations for you, it's a recipe for disaster. So Newcastle, I'm not feeling the greatest at this point. I still got a bit of anxiety and then some druggies show up to our gathering. They're not even involved with the meetup, but they then start talking to me and talking to these 14 year old fans about drugs and stuff. I can see everyone around getting really uncomfortable and I see this girl's face going, what is he talking about? I'm confused. So I start getting really upset. My anxiety's flaring up because I'm like, I don't want someone to have gone to this gathering and then end up running with these people. And I'm getting so uncomfortable that I run over to Luke immediately. I talk to Luke and James. I'm like, there's druggies here. They're talking about this stuff. It's making me uncomfortable. And they're like, we'll keep an eye on them. So we did keep an eye on them and they ended up leaving, but the whole time I was there, I literally was uncomfortable and I kept looking to make sure they weren't talking to anyone from our group anymore. And I just, oh my God, I'd never felt more uncomfortable. And multiple people in Newcastle were looking at me and saying, are you okay? Because multiple times I'd be zoning out. I'd be looking at the ground. I'd be like doing this. And they'd be like, you okay? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I've, I don't feel like telling everyone right now, like, yes, I've got major anxiety. I didn't necessarily want to share that, but yes, that's what I was going through. Now, two, that was a big setup. At one point, an hour into the gathering, I noticed there's these three girls that are standing off to the side and they look like they don't really belong with us. So I went over to them and I said, hey, is everything okay? And they said, yeah, we feel a bit uncomfortable because we've got like social anxiety and we want to talk to Luke, but we haven't yet because he's surrounded by so many people and we can't get in. So at this point, I do what I do best and I'm like, I'm going to help you out. I grab them, I go over to Luke and I'm like, hey, these people haven't met you yet. And I pull Luke away to meet people that haven't met him yet. Now that sounds like a nice thing to do. You might think, Evan, how nice of you. You know who didn't like that? A lot of people, a lot of people were incredibly angry. At this point, people started attacking me, saying, why do you want to leave so bad, Evan? Trying to force Luke to make sure he meets everyone so you guys can leave, is that what it is? And I am suffering at this point so strongly, I literally walked away. I walked away and started looking at the ducks in the lake because it was the only way I could calm down. I came back and yet again, even after bringing Luke into these new fans who haven't met him yet, I saw the same small group of people try and just jump back in to cut in line again and it angered me. And so I called them out and I said, hey, listen, how many times have you met Luke so far? These people haven't met him yet. To which this girl's response was, well, yeah, but I have to leave soon. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is the point where I lost it because this person was so incredibly selfish, had such a lack of self-awareness. I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't understand. Now at this point, I tried to get through to her in a different way. I said, well, these girls have social anxiety and haven't been able to talk to Luke yet because they can't seem to get through the group of people that are constantly asking him for more and more things. To which her response was, I have anxiety too. Yep, that's right. Oh my God, I can't believe it. You, you beat every single argument I had. I know that you've already met Luke seven times and asked for a Snapchat, a Polaroid, a FaceTime with your girlfriend, and also a photo, a group photo, everything you could ever ask for. But you know, these girls I haven't met yet. Their anxiety, same level as yours. Absolutely not. And there were so many people like this at the Newcastle gathering that it irked me. I cannot hide how upset I am with this group of people being around me and trying to take photos with me and get social points with me. I'm sorry. I do not respect you if you have no respect for me. I'm a human being. You're a human being. Treat me like that, all right? This isn't just social bingo where you try and cross off as many ticks as you can and get social points with your friends. Get them in an Instagram. Get them in a Snapchat filter. Get them in a Polaroid. Let's get a group photo. FaceTime my friend. I'd much rather have an actual intellectual conversation if you can stomach one of those with another human. I guess not. So yeah, I didn't have the best time at the Newcastle gathering. There was a lot of lovely people there, but there was some rude people that really just rubbed me the wrong way, made my anxiety flare up, and it was not good for me. And now we come to Glasgow. To set the stage, you know those people online that you used to like Taylor Swift, but now they don't, but they still follow her and quote retweet with, I hate you, you're terrible. You know, those type of people, like really intelligent, smart, like it's, it's really great. It's really cool and edgy to like, I used to be part of this, but now I'm so much better than other fans because pff, I grew up. Well, guess who came to Glasgow? A nice group of people that literally, and I saw the tweets, the person is private of their Twitter at this point, but I saw the tweets of people saying, ha ha, showed up to the Luke and Evan meetup, look at all these lame fans. They're literally there as a joke, to be like, huh, we used to like this, isn't that funny? Look at all these people. I mean, grow up, I guess? I, uh, what, what the f It's also worthy to note that there was multiple people in this group I had already had muted on Twitter. What does that mean? I do not mute people willy-nilly. I mute people that I find incredibly offensive or rude for no reason. And so it leads me to believe there were definitely people at this meetup specifically because they did not like me. It sounds like a conspiracy theory, but once I go through the actual thread, I think you'll understand. Especially because they did and also tweeted about the fact that while I was meeting fans, they were shouting the word pedo at me, which if that doesn't make you look comfortable meeting fans, I don't know what will. And now it's time to get to the Twitter thread. It's time to provide some context. One of the Twitter threads has since been deleted and the person emailed me to apologize and say she got caught up in the drama and that's okay. I have no ill feelings towards this person, but one of the things they had said, which a lot of people seemed to latch onto, was that I was making fun of a young girl's shoes. Whenever I'm feeling awkward, I always end up looking at the ground and I comment on shoes. Why? I've got white Adidas superstars with black stripes. It was literally the basic white girl shoe of last year. Everybody had them, and for me, it was a good way to relate to people and be like, hey, I've got those shoes, I got the memo, like them. And then this year, it turns out to be the black van shoes. Everyone's got them this year. And so at one point, I looked down and went, oh, you two got the black vans, texting each other in the group chat. I see, oh, you, you've got the Primark ones. Now this person then replied with, oh, what's wrong with Primark? And I was like, nothing. I mean, I literally bought my entire, like, first outfits from Primark when I moved to the UK. But if you leave that part out, right, and leave, leave out the context, it makes it seem like I'm like, oh, you've got Primark shoes. Why is Evan judging this girl's shoes? Also, this is incredibly crucial. The person whose shoes I talked about 
was not actually the one offended. If you look at the original tweet, which has been deleted at this point, sadly didn't get the receipts, the person offended was just nearby and was their friend and said, when he made fun of my friend's shoes, I cried. Okay, um, what? Most of this thread, by the way, is people getting offended for other people. It's... Here we go, let's just dive into the big one. One, Evan kept acting like he didn't want to be there. Like I said, I think I've explained myself pretty well. I had a lot of anxiety. I felt like people were trying to take photos with me to secretly tweet them and go like, oh, I'm with this guy, I hate this guy. So there was a lot of anxiety going on at that meetup. Also saying who hasn't met me at a gathering is incredibly commonplace, not rude at all, and is a way to meet the people that have been waiting that are too shy to talk to you because there's other people that are constantly talking the whole time. Once I meet everyone, I'm okay to have a chat. I'll chat for ages with you. I've not met anyone yet. Luke Cotforth, evil jerk, confirmed. Next point was that someone asked me to sign their rainbow flag, to which I replied, whoa, it sounds like it said something else. I mean, pride was just today. You probably shouldn't say that. Now, anyone with at least two and a half brain cells might be able to realize that I was saying, yeah, you know, your, fun, your accent's pretty funny. It sounded like you said something inappropriate. You shouldn't say that. But if you're, hold on, grasping at straws, you might think, oh, it's because he thinks that you shouldn't say that in case you get in trouble for saying it, but you're still homophobic and SJWs and wow. Uh, it seems a lot of conjecture in there, but I'm sure if you're trying to maliciously pick someone in a certain way, then Good, you're doing a good job. The next part of the thread is one of the funny ones because most of my friends that read this thread laughed out loud when they got to this part because it sounds so much like me, which is someone said, can I get a hug? And I replied, no. And then they said, oh well, you're lost. And I replied, it really isn't. I can't believe Evan Editor was sarcastic. He doesn't come off that way in videos at all. When someone asks you a basic question like, can I ask you a question or can I get a hug? There is never going to be a possibility of a no. It's always going to be a yes. But what throws people off with a quick bit of humor? No, the opposite of what you expect. Oh, whoa. Obviously, it's how deadpan I do it that makes it funny. Obviously, I continue and I hug people. That's how it is. It's not like I went, no. Nope, really isn't. Goodbye. That would be a lot, what? But yet again, this person has left out context because otherwise it wouldn't really fit their narrative. The next part of the thread details on how I basically tried to talk down to someone in a wheelchair, which let's not just refer to them by someone in a wheelchair. Hi Paige, if you're watching, you're a lovely human. Right after the meetup, I literally was talking about you to Connie and how nice you are. Guess what? This person, Paige, didn't have any problem with anything I did, but here we go again. Someone nearby was listening and went, Oh, I just hate that Evan Edinger. I'm just so... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Paige had told me something about her leg. I had tried to relate to her in a way by saying, I actually have an incredibly bad right knee. The doctor said I had a 65-year-old knee like 10 years ago, and I might end up in a wheelchair. This is me trying to relate to this person, trying to talk to them like a normal human. Which I'm sure Paige appreciated, considering she said she wasn't offended by anything I said. And then at one point, Paige had said, well, she's got issues with her spine. And I went, oh yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Your spine is most definitely worse than mine. Uh, this was, yet again, just another attempt to talk to them like a normal human being, uh, which is instead me talking down to them and trying to act like I am having a worse off time. I, I really don't get the point they're trying to make. Like I said, we we just gotta grab these straws. We, got, we, we gotta grab as many as we can. The next part of the thread said I looked really uncomfortable in photos. Yes, it's because I was really uncomfortable. Duh. Next up in the thread, I was making fun of people's Glaswegian accents, which is, it's, a, it's hard for me to say it without laughing because at this point, it's like just stating things like, and then he went to the store and trying to make it seem negative. Who would have thought Evan Edinger, an American that lives in England, tries to, you know, talk about differences between cultures and does different accents, would ever laugh at an accent. At this point, people are talking to me, we're having fun with our accents, we're laughing with each other. I'm trying to do my best Scottish accent, obviously, it's terrible. We're all laughing together, unless you're on the side going, I hate Evan Edinger and I will use this. <laughs> it's just, some of these are so ridiculous. I just can't imagine someone like reading this thread and going, I can't believe he was m making fun of accents. Come on. Next part of the thread details on how I wouldn't talk to someone who'd been on FaceTime for ages. Why does Evan Edinger think he's so much better than everyone else? I just don't get it. Maybe because the context, okay? Let's just say this, okay? I'm having a conversation with someone, we're having a nice chat, and then someone comes out and just shoves a phone in my face. Evan, hey Evan, I'm talking to my friend, they've been waiting on FaceTime for ages. You know what? You know what? I do not have any respect for someone that has no respect for me. I do not give a crap if your friend's been on FaceTime for two days. You do not just shove your phone in someone's face and expect them to just talk to someone. That's not how human interaction works, okay, friends? We have conversations, we wait our turn, we talk, we ask, hey, would you mind talking to my friends on FaceTime? Not, hey, what's your friend? 
like, absolutely not. And so to this person I said, no, can you see I'm in a conversation? I'm sorry, I'm not fake. I'm sorry I'm not gonna be a YouTuber that just smiles as you literally try and get more and more and more engagement out of me. And I go, yes, please, I'll just ignore this person and talk to you because you're just so popular and you deserve so much more of my time than everyone else. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to quit the BS with you right there. I do not respect you if you do not respect me. Maybe if you'd waited until I'd finished that conversation, then called your friend on FaceTime and been like, hey, um, Evan, is there any way? Of course, of course I'll talk to them. I'm, you know, you're a polite person asking a favor. Yeah, duh, I'm not freaking evil. But if you're going to disrespect me, absolutely not. I do not want you in my fandom, in my group at all, leave. Now at this point in the thread, I would not blame you if while you're reading it, you're thinking, you know, Evan seems like he's not the greatest guy at these meetups. Sure, he took off a week of work to meet all these people, but maybe he's just a dick. Until you get to the next point in which I, at this point, I'm like, I don't understand how you could have read past this and not seen the malicious intent of the OP at all. Because this is where the true colors come out. At one point during the Glasgow meetup, I was asked to sign a condom. Now, you don't have to be a longtime fan of mine to know what sexuality I am. I've made videos about it three years ago, two years ago. Actually, this month, a couple weeks ago, made a video about, you know, I'm on the asexual scale. So that's some context there, just so you know. So when someone gives me a condom, I literally say, Oh, uh, I feel uncomfortable actually doing that. And I tried to use humor to, you know, as a coping mechanism. I said, oh, you know, my manager won't let me do that. It goes against my contract, no signing condoms, you know, bad for brand. And they then insisted, no, sign the condom. To which I then reiterated my discomfort saying, uh, I really don't want to do that. I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with that. This makes me uncomfortable. To which OP of the thread just went, no, sign the condom because I, you know, they're entitled to everything from me. I have no right to feel discomfort. They're asking a favor. I, they deserve this. And so, feeling so uncomfortable with this situation, I then said, I'll sign it as Luke, because I'm gonna be honest, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. And so, I jokingly wrote Luke's name on it because this person was so persistent. Now, in order to understand OP's logic on this move, by the way, I'm gonna be honest, you're going to require at least a degree in rocket science because this logic is so, so airtight and above anyone else's normal IQ, I don't think you watching this can understand. OP then said, it was weird of me not to sign the condom because, and I quote, it's not my fault he's not getting some. You don't have to be so sex repulsed. I'm ace and I'm fine. Whew, oh my God, I hope I've just blown all of your minds in, in the audience because geez, this person, G Albert Einstein, can't believe it. Did you know every asexual is the same person? Did you know every human is the same? Did you know that no one, regardless of their background, is, is sex repulsed and you have no right to be? Fuck yourself, absolutely fuck yourself if you thought that was okay and for some reason you thought I had no right to do that. You do not know me and you do not know my background. You do not know why that made me uncomfortable and you had no right to insist it and then make a joke and then make a threat about it. Absolutely go fuck yourself. Now, uh, that aside, most of the rest of the thread was was just genuinely little small things that they were trying really hard, like I said, how many, how many straws can we grasp at this point? So the next part of the thread, they said Luke's circle was bigger, Evan was super jealous. No, like I said, I felt extra the whole time and I just wanted to leave, so there you go for that. Next part in the thread said, uh, <laughs> Evan kept trying to be funny and I ripped the piss sort of well. <laughs> Which, if you don't speak Scottish, rip the piss, it means sarcastic. So. One of the negative things I did in Glasgow was try to be funny <laughs> in a sarcastic way. <laughs> Which is just, that's, <laughs> just, I just can't believe someone read this thread and went, ah, Evan's such a dick. <laughs> Can you believe Evan Edinger was sarcastic? He doesn't come off that way in videos. What? What? Evan? Can't believe it. Woo! Next, it was said that anytime Luke did anything, Evan had to join in. Like this high five chain that Luke made and ran through, and then Evan just had to shove himself in where he wasn't wanted. What's really fun about this is at this point, OP is not even like co removing context. He, he's literally just making lies at this point. Uh, what happened here was, I am trying to leave this gathering. I've met everyone. Luke has nearly met everyone. I feel very uncomfortable and unsafe and I just want to go. What's a good way to say goodbye? A group photo with everyone usually makes everyone feel like they got that last engagement and then we can leave or a high five chain. I've done many meetups and so I myself organize a line of people, put their hands together and we'll run through for the video and high five everyone. I literally made that up. Explain what's happening. We've made a fun little chain here where as we come towards the group, Everyone lifts their arms. I, I mean, I, I was literally the one saying, everyone line up. But you know, uh, as OP, 
lie your ass off so it seems like I'm a bad guy. Oh yeah, you totally had good intent. You were just really disappointed. You d uh, yeah, sure. And the last thing in the thread, like I said, we got straws jumping all over the place. You gotta grasp some of them. Someone asked me to sign their flag and dare I say, I signed it using their head as a flat surface. Everyone cried! It was an injustice! Actually, um, I do that multiple times. Everyone usually laughs. It's kind of making fun of myself as being this monstrously tall person. And the person involved also thought it was funny. There's multiple threads on the internet saying, I don't understand why these are so negative about Evan. I, had this, I was at the same meetup. It was fine. He did that. Everyone laughed. Why is OP so negative? Well, being positive doesn't get you that many retweets, okay? Call out culture's all about, oh yeah, they're a dick. Let's just spread some negativity about them. Even if it's not true, who's gonna check it? I haven't even heard their side yet. They're over, canceled. Oh. Call out culture is a really good time for people that aren't really in your community that kind of don't like you because you're not really gonna please everyone, but it's a good chance for those people to come out of the woodworks and be like, oh, uh, is this person over now? I always hated them. I, they're dumb. I hate them a lot. I don't really care about those people. I mean, there's people like that all the time. Like I said, the people that used to be a fan of me and then they just grew out of it are now like, oh, I'm so much better than all these dumb fans that went to this. I am smarter than them because I don't like them anymore. Congratulations, it makes you super smart and edgy. Like I said, you're really enlightened. The only people I was mostly upset about in these threads were people that were like, I've subscribed to Evan for four years. This is so strange. It's not anything like him. I've met him and he wasn't like this. I'm so sad I have to leave without even hearing my side of the story. And to that I say, Leave, honestly. If you're someone that will just blindly listen to anything someone else says about someone without hearing two sides of the story, I honestly don't want you. I would much rather have 100 rational people watching my video than 10,000 people that blindly follow me or just blindly follow anything anyone will say. Absolutely, any day. I want you to have an opinion. I want you to have an opinion that's not necessarily mine. We can discuss it, we can chat about it. Not someone that's just like, Evan said this, so it's true. Or some random dick said this, so it's true. No, please don't. At this point, people were like, this is so strange. Is Evan like this at every meetup? Who's been to an old one? And this next tweet made me laugh <laughs> so much because it said, I met Evan at the end of Playlist Live and he was really tired. <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you want from me? I'm sorry, I'm not a robot. Oh man, I met so many people, I had an exhausting day and yet I'm supposed to be like, hey, how's it going? Please, for the love of God, afford me the ability to be a human. Is that that much to ask? I'm gonna be tired. What do you want? You want me to be this version on the screen that's full of energy, that's just drunk a coffee, speaking really fast, and is an unbounding source of energy? I'm a human being just like you, Jesus Christ. I also saw another tweet from an actual genius that made me laugh more than most others, and it was someone saying, I can't believe that Luke, Connie, and Dodie are still friends with him. They need to kick him out. And the reason I say this, this person is clearly so intelligent. They're, so they're the smartest person on Twitter. They know more about me from reading a thread than people that I'm actually friends with, that I chat to on a daily basis, that I hang out to. Yeah, of course, of course, you know so much more about me than these other people. Why would they be friends with me? You're right. My God, you are, you are literally the number one Evan source. I trust you. I, I don't know why they haven't left either. It's crazy. Please stop thinking you know me better than friends do. Like, absolutely, just shut up. You're just so stupid. To all those lovely viewers and fans that I've met in Dublin, in Belfast, in Cardiff, that were just so, so lovely and supportive, I just wanna say thank you. I got so many nice emails from people saying, hey, I saw this thread, it really upset me, but I haven't heard your side of the story yet. Looking forward to hearing about it. Thank you. Holy crap, you are so rational. I appreciate you so, so much. Like I said, I have to make this video because people have just made a big stink out of it. It's my 28th birthday. I should be celebrating. Can we get this video to 28,000 likes? Who knows? And as a closing statement, I just wanted to say, if you use my friend Dodie's face or name in your social media presence or any other YouTuber's face or name for that matter, and you use it to spread negativity and hatred online, well, I just want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, as humbly as I can say, go fuck yourself. You're a terrible person. And I'm sure that whatever YouTuber you're besmirching their name with, really appreciates you in their fandom. They really do. I'm sure they do. You are the reason why people find certain fandoms toxic because you are toxic. You bring toxicity to any group you go to. Please just go on your own way. Be a dick with your own face. Don't besmirch someone else's face, especially someone as lovely and kind as Dodie. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, listening to my story. If you weren't aware of any of this drama, here you go. Wasn't it fun? It was a fun time for me. Like I said, people like jumping on like, can't wait for Evan to be canceled. And I'm just laughing the whole time because it's like, all this is such jokes. And if you're someone that's going to leave for that type of stuff that I didn't do without hearing any context, I literally don't want you back. I'm gonna be honest. Like I said, rather have someone smart, rational, not worshiping, not just gonna like jump out and do call out culture. 
get out. Like, I don't want you. I'd rather have smart people following me. Thanks everyone that's sticking by. I'll see you guys next week. Happy birthday. Bye.